In 1971, the free New York newspaper, The Village Voice, started something new. It was a top 10 list, the top 10 albums of the year, but it wasn't based on their opinion. It collected different reviews from different sources. Think of it like Metacritic, okay, but way before the internet. Now this was overseen by rock critic god Robert Christgau, and what he did that I really want to focus on now was he called it the Paz and Jop list, which is a, a spoonerism. That's where you take the first letters of two different words and you mix them up, like butterfly and flutterby. But I've really been struck by this. You know, my dad uh, had a subscription to <laughs> The Village Voice, so I, I used to see it all the time. And I used to be drawn in by this concept of Paz and Jop. Beyond the fact that it's funny and clever, what did it actually do to mix up these words like this? In my mind, it deflated the power of genre. It deflated the concept that we have to think of pop and jazz as two different things and allowed us to sort of Think of them in a sort of hybrid situation, because both of these words were in themselves hybrid. Now this comes to mind because I'm going to be reviewing the album Timeless by Kay Trinata, and I have a really hard time categorizing what he is and what he does. He does rap, he does R&B, he does techno, but the most important thing he does, at least in my opinion, is he mixes together these two words, which are the, basically the most ubiquitous words in I don't know, music appreciation in the 2020s, two words which every time I use them, I cringe because I'm an old guy using young terms. And those terms are vibes and bops. Vibes are musical songs that are designed to create an atmosphere and allow you to just sort of check out and not really engage with what's happening. You know, maybe this is necessary in an age of overstimulation. I don't know why, but that's what we say. And then the other word is bops. Those are, word, those are songs that go harder. Those are songs which make you dance, might make you a little bit aggressive, might make you a little bit joyful, etc. So what I want to do is call K. Trinata <laughs> Not the king of Paz and Jop, but the king of Bibes and Vop. Thank you for auditing the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who's sticking with this idea of Bibes and Vops. This hybrid, which is an idea that I keep coming up with when I, I study the art of K. Trinata, this mixture of multiple different things, because his songs, to me, are constantly in between vibes and bops. I sometimes find myself nodding my head and dancing. I sometimes find myself sort of nodding off and contemplating. And sometimes it's to the same song, just at different times. Now, the name of the album is not Vibe and Bop or Vibe and Vop. It's Timeless. Whoa. If an artist uses the term timeless, they are really putting it out there. That takes a lot of courage. Sometimes it's foolhardy. You know, the, the most foolhardy word in music history is forever, by the way. <laughs> Any album that's called forever, watch out. I mean, Wu-Tang released Wu-Tang Forever, and it's a great album, awesome album, you know, top 20 rap album of all time, I'd say, uh, but it still really marked their decline in the popular consciousness. Uh, bon Jovi is releasing an album called Forever. <laughs> I don't think it's forever. And most famously, or perhaps infamously, Puff Daddy announced the end of his musical career with a song called, with an album called Forever, which I own but cannot show to you because it is in such deep storage I will never listen to it again. What a hunk of crap. Timeless, much like Forever, is a really bold claim. Because what is the opposite of timeless? Dated. Of the moment. You listen to the song and you think, ah, I know exactly when this was recorded, I know exactly how it was made. I think if we mix these two concepts together, something to be timeless and something that mixes together seamlessly, effortlessly, vibes and bops, I think that's what makes this album successfully timeless, is that it's filled with vibes and vop. Now the personal question is, will anything top the song Rich Ass Haitian off of the Makami album? No. <laughs> Come on. When he works with Ma Kami, I'm just saying, a Ma Kami K. Trinata album would be amazing. I like the album with, uh, with Amine uh, from last year, but wow. So, you know, uh, this whole mixture that I'm talking about, you know, like, I, very often when I listen to this album, I just kind of vibe out. I just sort of be like, you know, either I'd be at the gym or I'd be over on the couch with my baby. Um, I mean, that literally, 18-month-old uh, baby. And I'd just be kind of sitting there and just sort of like, oh, sh I, have to, I have to take notes, right? I, sorry, it's very hot here. It's very hot. It's very summery. Um, this is a 
This is actually Mother Teresa's headpiece. I bought it on eBay. She's a criminal. Uh, but what I would do is I would listen to this album. I'd be trying to take notes, and I'd just be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 I gotta go back. I have to listen to it again because I would just kind of go to another place. And then I listened to it more carefully, and my thumbs would hurt because I was trying to type up all the different details, all the different rhythms, all the different mm, tones and, and, and dynamics that are put into this. It's amazingly rich in that way. Maybe his hybridity could be a result of his many different cultures which are together. Obviously, he's from Montreal, my second favorite city on planet Earth, and eh, third favorite. Marseille, Paris. Montreal. Those are my three favorite cities. Come at me if you disagree. Uh, but Montreal is certainly my favorite city in North America, one of my favorite places to go. And part of the reason why is how culturally rich it is, what an amazing melting pot it is of European, American, and Canadian cultures. And then, of course, with the great influx of people from Haiti, like Kei Trinata, it also adds a Haitian influence as well. All those things all kind of mixed up together. I, I read the Rolling Stone interview with him recently, or article on him, and it turns out he's gay. I had no idea. <laughs> I, f I found out that he was gay when his article was listed like Pride Month. I was like, why are they doing Pride Month for Kei Trinata? Perhaps the most interesting thing I learned in that is that his primary influence, and this makes a lot of sense, is Jay Dilla, which I didn't understand until I did. So I'm going to explain that in some depth very soon. But really, I think it's, it's this weird interstitial place that makes him so interesting to me. How it's really, like you can always tell a cage not a beat probably because of the rhythms. You know, he just has this way of using drums in a very sort of hyper chopped up, choppy, crunchy drums. Like almost hard to dance to. I think that's the main definition. That's the main like trademark. <clears throat> Sometimes he'll have kind of Pharrell-like futuristic synthesizers. Sometimes the rhythms even remind me of Timbaland. But all the way through, it's just this staggered feeling. Of this like, <clears throat> there's just something about a cage, not a beat. I'll do more. <laughs> I'll describe it more than just saying there's something about it. But there is something to be said about an ineffable quality, and there's an ineffable quality to his, his drum production, where I would have to be some kind of Dan Charnas level genius to figure out how to properly define exactly what it is that he does with his drums to make his drums sound like K. Trinata drums. If you're out there and you have that idea, you think you can define what it is that makes K. Trinata's drums so great, tell me in the comments. I, I will absolutely pin that puppy, okay? So look in the, look in the description. Has somebody helped me out with a good definition, a good simultaneously stylistic and rhythmic definition of what makes K. Trinata's drum so good? That puppy will be pinned. This album is interesting because it's like uh, a mixture of him trying to show the world like, hey, I'm still that guy. I got a song with Childish Gambino. I got a song with Pink Panthers. I got a song with Don Tolliver. Look at these great stars. And then also him highlighting lesser known singers, lesser known performers. And I think that's to, to the strength of the project, that it really constantly feels in between. Again, very kind of hybrid between him using his power to help other people and him using other people's power to help him. I just, I'm sitting at the kitchen table now. There's someone uh, painting my porch. So I don't want to be like staring at someone painting my porch. <laughs> I'm doing this. A little bit weird. Hi! That's how you make money. This is one way that I make money. I talk to my telephone. About Kate Trinata. What's your opinion on Kate Trinata, Sammy? Uh, but, you know, we were just sitting at this, at this table and we were listening to this album. And literally, it was, it was like she knew. My wife goes, when is this from? It's like, this is from last week. She's like, well, it sounds like it's from the 2000s, doesn't it? from the mouth of babes. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't call my wife a babe. She's a babe. What are you going to do? So what I want to do is I want to illustrate this uh, with a stamp. Now normally I do a stamp of one song, one example song to give you an example of what it sounds like, but I don't think that works because this is such a long and connected album. You know, I do think that Donuts is a very good touch point for this album. I, mean, I don't think it's as successful as Donuts. But that's, it's not exactly insulting an album to say it's not as good as it 
goddamn masterpiece. But it is absolutely in a, very similar in a lot of ways, uh, especially in the way that it flows. So I'm going to take a couple songs from the middle, okay, with a sort of stamp, part, with the first stamp and then the second stamp. Now, did I do this wrong? I did. I did do this wrong. Okay, so the first stamp is the song, sorry, I have my notes all messed up here, but you don't care. You're in for a penny, in for a pound, is the song Seemingly. All right, so we're gonna go seemingly into Drip Sweat. I, I will dab my forehead again when I get to that song. The song Seemingly, to me, is the best example of where we see the Jay Dilla influence. And what I like is that, you, it's not like you never hear people influenced by Jay Dilla. I never feel like it's imitating. I never feels like it's some pale imitation. It feels like he's sort of learning from the technique and building on it and not just trying to be Jay Dilla. I mean, the sample is from someone named Don Blackman. The song's called Holding You, Loving You, with this weird <laughs> line, seemingly I love you. <laughs> like, what a weird thing to say. But he does the Jay Dilla technique of cutting up different parts of the same song to make a sample here. And these great synths, they're blared, and there's this great egg shaker, and then the great Catronata jittery drums, which will be described by the pinned puppy in the comments. One of the elements of the Catronada drum beat is just an obsession with the sound of a closing hi-hat. So if you don't know, hi-hats are, are two cymbals that are on the left side of a drum kit, usually, okay? And they're, they're, they're connected up here, and they, they stay open. And when you press down on your foot, they close, okay? Without, if you don't play them, they just go tink, 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 tink. But if you play them, it goes like this. Tsk, tsk. That's the sound of a closing hi-hat. That's one of the most satisfying sounds on a drum machine, on a drummer, and a drum machine for that matter. So he uses that sound, and I think that's the backbone of the Catronata drum sound, because I think that has a kind of staccato feel, has a kind of clipped feeling, and we hear that all the way throughout the entire album. Kind of a downbeat house vibe, little weird sounds from time to time. This is what I'm saying, like you can just vibe out to the song and not pay attention, then you can listen more carefully and be like, oh, what's that little high melody? Pl creating this kind of sense of polyrhythm, like it creates polyrhythm and counterpoint at the same time, which is where I'm going to get to my big reveal, tentative reveal. Have you read Dan Charnas' Deal of Time? It's a very good book, very dense. I've, you know, I've read it the way uh, academics read it, which is to say I've probably read like 100 pages of it, but I haven't read it page to page. I'm kind of looking around for it. I've sort of like scanned it. I've consumed it. I haven't like really sat down and read it. I've listened to a lot of interviews with him. Uh, but the most important part of it is his description of what he calls Dilla time, okay? Which he illustrates with this very handy function where you have straight time, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and swung time. And his argument is that what Dilla did so well is he would have multiple rhythmic feels at the same time. Some of them would be swung, and others would be straight. When you put those together, it becomes that. That beautiful little Mondrian right there, where some of the beats are ahead, some of the beats are behind. I have sat with this song for hours. I have listened to it. I've messaged Dan Charnas on Instagram. I, if he gets back to me, I will include what he says right there, okay? So that'd be awesome. God damn, I hope there's a little thing up there. I would love to make an addendum to this video that's Dan Charnas telling me something, but I suspect he probably doesn't use Instagram that much, so it's probably just gonna stay empty. It's okay. We can get over the disappointment. I listened to it with my son, who's a drummer, better drummer than I am, and he said no. He said this is not swinging and straight at the same time. It's just polyrhythm. Okay, it doesn't really matter because what matters to me the most is the feeling that you get listening to Dilla Time. What Dan Charnas was trying to do, I believe, and this is my words, is quantify the unquantifiable. What is it about a J. Dilla beat that makes you nod your head in a certain way? There's some kind of ineffable perfection, some kind of hard to grasp, satisfying, unsatisfying feeling all at the same time. And it's in that hybridity, the mixture of the straight and the swung. So I don't know. 
in my opinion, I hear Dilla Time all over this album, but I am not enough of an expert to tell you with confidence. I can tell you polyrhythm when I hear it. That's where multiple rhythms happen at the same time. That in and of itself is very complicated and doesn't happen in most songs. Okay, like that is very complicated, having two rhythms going at the same time, much like counterpoint, but even more complicated than counterpoint, because counterpoint is just notes. It's not rhythms keeping these things together, and that's what he's able to do. And then as the song ends, we have this great egg shaker going all the time. As it ends, there's this like, it goes straight into the next song. You don't even notice. It's totally seamless. This great, almost like Donda style thumping drums with Travis Scott style auto tunes. Okay? Do you understand what I'm, like, we're like some 1972 soul song is all kind of chopped up here, and we might be in 2010, and then we get kind of Donda, blah, 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 kind of uh, Travis Scott style auto tunes, and then these great medieval synth horns, bam, 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 and then, and then, and then. This is, this is what I'm talking about. What decade is this from? We have, I believe, uh, this is not on whosampled.com yet. I believe, I'm not positive, that the first sample is Ashley Roach clip by the Soul Searchers from 1974, okay? You might know that from the famous PM Dawn song. Uh, you might know that from Paid in Full. Peace, all right? So that sound, that's the sound of the closing hi-hats at the end of that measure. And, girl, you know it's true by Millie Vanilli. It doesn't matter if they're frauds, they wrote bops. And then, it goes from that absolute staple of late 80s hip hop. I mean, we're talking, we're talking Slick Rick and, 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 and a whole bunch of other artists use that sound. I'm trying to think who else. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of other people who used tsk, tsk. Already Slick Rick and Eric B and Millie Vanilli, you know, we're in, we're in the, major thing. And then he mixes in the It Takes Two beat. Now the It Takes Two beat is a sample from Lynn Collins' Think. Oh! Ha! Ah. Right? It takes two to make a thing go right. Boom. Booty boom boom. So like that's like the great late 80s pop rap song. So is the PM Dawn song. So that like mixing them together puts you in a very late 80s place. And in a way, these synthesizers are very Pharrell-like. They sound kind of old and futuristic at the same time. I'd say Pharrell's also interestingly timeless. And then we get more of the weird kind of very 2024 sounding Travis Scotty stuff going on here. You see what I'm saying? You catch my drift. You see the timelessness and the mixture and the hybridity. And the first time I listened to the song, I was just like, yeah, this is a this is a vibe. This is a bop. And we got uh, we got the, this this rapper on here, Channel Trace, who I guess is a Compton rapper who released an album last week as well. I'll have to check it out. I imagine it's probably pretty good. I like him here. He's very kind of cool. Man's got me effed up. Let's keep my head up. Hold your hands up. They might not shoot y'all. All this hoopla because of the internet. It's about bullshit. You know, he's just kind of like rapping, and then we get this really cool thing where it cuts out and gets rhythmically interesting. This kind of drip. Drip, drip, drip sweat. Okay. Uh, if you've never read Christopher Hitchens' work on Mother Teresa, you're welcome. <laughs> Look into it. It's, it's saint. Uh, and then, like, maybe even some drill style bass pops up at a certain point in here. And then it, it seems like it's fading out, but then it leads directly into hold on with this double high head. Stop, stop, Sky, stop, Sky, stop. You're just going to describe the whole middle of the album. You're going to go middle out. Calm down. Okay, this isn't Pied Piper. Don't go middle out. I was just trying to give you an example of how the song, how the album goes, and we end up just looping it all together. It's an album which can be taken in chunks and can be taken all together. So, let's go back to the beginning. Let's see how the album begins while I try to figure out my notes here. Uh, smash like bucket, subscribe. If you like this video. Put in A-V-A-A. -A. That stands for awesome video as always. I will always heart those comments. And uh, what else do I say? I guess you can do the bell thing. If you're watching the live premiere, don't put A-V-A-A -A in the comments of the live premiere because I can't heart those because so you can put those in the normal comments. All right, we're all good. I don't think I have any sponsors this, uh, this week. Mm. Yeah, I still don't bet on sports. You know, the, the finals are happening right now. Don't, don't do it. Don't bet on basketball. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. It's a stressful enough game as it is to watch the end of a basketball game. It's terrible. 
they just lose your money. Okay, opens up with a track called Pressure. Very weird opening. This is not like the rest of the album. This song, this song has basically no chills. Like a speed up kind of crunchy drum madness beat. This piano is pulsing. Speaking of basketball, at a certain point, it reminds me of a kind of basketball intro, like that Alan Parsons song that uh, Michael Jordan uses. You know, bam, 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 bam. but it's a very triumphant intro song that itself ends gently to lead into the song "Spit It Out" by Rochelle Jones. Speaking of famous hip hop samples. There's just the middle section of oh of the Puerto Rico oh just the oh in there again it's for the it's for the hip hop heads who are listening little guitar sample at the end of the phrase really breathy singing you gotta spit it out right now I understand that he's very influenced by Jay Dilla but this feels very Timbaland and Aaliyah ish to me again going back to like when is this from and then there's like a string outro like a cinematic outro and he really lets the beat ride. Call You Up is the next song. I learned about this by reading The Rolling Stone. Jeez. Robert Criscow and Rolling Stone. If you appreciate music criticism, it's not all on the internet. There is other good music criticism in places like where it's like written down and stuff. And hey, Dan Charnas for that matter. So in that article, it turns out Lou Phelps is Cape Trinata's brother. And they used to have a duo where they were going to perform together and K. Trinata blew up and basically had to leave his brother behind in order to have success. So this song represents their coming together again, and I think it's great. Lou Phelps is a good rapper, um, cool kind of hissy sample, almost kind of like South American disco feeling. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that. Very syncopated piano. The lyrics, okay, my main problem with this album is that when I can pick up the lyrics, they're kind of gross sex stuff. But I like the idea here. I don't want to call you because I don't want to fall in love, but I don't think I've had enough. So it's kind of an interesting idea of like being in love with, you know, like being attracted to someone, but like wanting to use them for their body, but being afraid of falling in love with them. A great sort of lower piano comes in at the end. I'm going to go through the rest of the album a lot quicker because I don't want this to be a three-hour review, but I could do the same thing that I did for those other two songs. It's a very dense album. Weird. Is an album, a next song featuring Duran Brennan. I don't know. Straight again from the last song, a little bit funkier, kind of guitar, low bass. Okay, this is wild because it's like funkadelic singing, and then it's like Montel Jordan singing. It's like it goes from like you know mothership funk style singing to well, somehow we're doing it. you know like. And that's cool, that's timeless. Even this, this dude is timeless. Like, what exactly are we? I really like this singer. He's very charismatic, he's very extra. And then this whole question, you know, why you, why you gotta be weird? You think that wasn't almost the name of this video? <laughs> you think this video wasn't almost called, Hey K. Trinato, why you gotta be weird? Why is he always gotta be weird sometime? Uh, dance, dance, dance. Dance is like a little interlude, a little too loud percussion bell, but this reminds me a lot of the sort of like Discovery era Daft Punk, love the kind of house synths in the middle that leads into Don Tolliver's Feel Away. I, I really do like Don Oliver. This song's just great. Did I call him Don Oliver? <laughs> I did. He's John Oliver's brother. Uh, kind of a nice staggered beat, just so good. It's just such a good beat. Don Tolliver's kind of in a Silo style here, these great compressed cheesy synths, nice kind of down part where his voice changes. He does a great, this is where I actually came up with the term vibe and vop. This, with this song, I was, I was walking around the, uh, I was at the YMCA and my knee still hurts, so I was walking around the track. I was watching these like dudes older than me playing basketball and I was inspired because you know, they were trying really hard. You know, I'm like, and I'm just realizing like, what do I do? And then right next to that was this old couple uh, that we're doing ballroom dancing on an entire basketball. And I was sort of thinking like, like which of these things is this a soundtrack to? Is it a soundtrack to a sweet old couple practicing ballroom dancing and screwing up the basketball floor? I'm not a big fan of that, but it doesn't matter. And, or am I a big fan of the people playing basketball next? It sort of has that kind of soundtrack to both. Still featuring Charlotte, Charlotte uh, Wilson, gentle kind of R&B, more of that clipped drums, Kind of high, almost like a galloping rhythm on the hi hat here. Video with uh, Ryan Linne, such a high baby voice. Again, really reminds me a lot of like listening to Jam in 94.5, Boston's hottest hip hop and RB in the late 90s. There were, oops, I'm gonna turn, whatever made that noise has to stop it. Uh, like, 
uh, really reminds me of that like era when Timbaland was all over the radio. I'm not going to be an old head, okay? I'm not going to say things were better in my day, but the world was a better place when chances were if you turned on a pop radio station, you'd hear a Timbaland beat. <clears throat> And then we get to the stamps, the double songs I just described. And I described how Drip Sweat went straight into Hold On with Don Richard. Great kind of like sweet R&B. The voice is maybe embellishing a little bit too much, but I don't know. This just has the, the essential k a feel. Then we get to Please Babe, which I think, I think the percussion is played on bottles. So I don't know. I don't know. Is this like a compas rhythm? Is this sort of like a Haitian rhythm? I don't know. I don't know enough about Haitian music to, to, my, own, to my own shame. I know a little bit. I, I learned how to dance the compas once. Uh, I, I took my class to a dance studio and we tried to do it so that when you learn about Haiti, you don't just learn about death and misery, you also learn about dancing and music and food and all that stuff. Uh, but I don't know. That's what I hear. But again, maybe I'm doing the, promo the sort of like, uh, uh, there's like a weird filter where I want to hear it. And the whole time it sounds like it's a Japanese American or I mean a Japanese woman saying, please, babe, which is a interesting thing to be saying. Stepped on, uh, awesome low synth. I think he's actually like singing or talking this time. I really enjoy that more than a little bit featuring Tanache. Um, so Tanache is the host of one of the better YouTube channels uh, about soccer or football uh, called Football Iconic. He does really good work out of England. I don't know why he sounds like a sexy blonde woman here, uh, but apparently there's also a singer with the same name. Uh, who's some kind of uh, sexy blonde lady who has a TikTok hit. I don't know how I just, how do I even know that? Maybe there's like an Instagram reel about it. Anyways, Tanache is good as a football commentator and as a singer, she's really great. Very kind of thin high hat. Uh, she sort of sings about like my back and my wrist and all that stuff. <laughs> Made me think of that song from 10 years ago. <laughs> my crack, my dumb, my, my crack. You know that song, but anyways. Um, uh, Do To Me is the next song with Anderson Pack. Again, sort of more Pharrell style here. It's just kind of a lost opportunity because I don't need to hear him singing about... So I just, God damn it. I understand it's hard being a rapper because you just, what do you rap about? But you got one shot on this album. Can you not rap about Whip It Out and Poke It and all that stuff? I think if I didn't speak English, I would love this song, but because I speak English, it's just too many gross sex bars. Although I did realize in researching on who sampled that this is a rephrasing of a sort of very obscure Notorious B.I.G. verse, which is okay, but I didn't like it when Notorious B.I.G. rapped about sex, okay? I'm effing you tonight is a skip, <laughs> right? It's a funny skip, but it's a skip. Um, be a shame if it didn't fit, like, bro, <laughs> take it easy. Did I just say bra? Now that's cringe. Next song is a song that everyone's probably skipping to by Childish Gambino, witchy, sweet, soft strings. This is a sample of Barry White standing in the shadow of love. What I like about it is that it's a sample before the kind of trademark harpsichord that makes Barry White so like distinctive, a lot of the sounds. Which means if this song takes off, we will have like that, which is a re redone, you know, a redone version of a Barry White song, and this. This could be another summer of Barry White. And Gambino's just great. He just sings so sweetly. It's like the whole album, you know, like you can just kind of just fade out and just not really pay attention to it, or you can listen to it carefully and, and marvel at its uh, capacity. Lover Friend is the final track on part one of the album. On title, it's broken in two parts, kind of more breathy, and if you love me, I'll show you affection. It's nice because like she started off the album and she ends the album. It's kind of a follow-up. It makes a nice little thing here. And then we get to part two, which does feel different. It does make sense this is broken up because we have that first part broken up with Rochelle. The second part feels like Lucy's. You know, they feel like loose tracks that are just put out there. So we have Wasted Words featuring Thundercat, uh, who is like all of a sudden is some great singer. <laughs> I don't know when that happened. I'm, I'm down for it because he's also playing bass. Uh, and <laughs> all the lyrics are just like, it's like you've got a gat who I don't give a fuck. Like, it's just like making fun of people who just like rap about stuff he doesn't care about. Just eat the cake you look like. You need some milk. Like get a new hat because your whole fit is trash. It's very, very funny. 
Reminds me, I grew up in a suburb of Boston, and all the jocks were funny. And the way they would make fun of you is they would go, Oh, buddy, new lid. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, new kicks, buddy. Whoa. Like they would say that if you needed new shoes. New kicks, buddy. Whoa. <laughs> Anyways, they used to say that to me. And then I went out and got Nike cross trainers, black and white. So they were white with just that little black rim around it. I should become a sneakerhead. If you're a sneakerhead, send me a link to the exact cross trainers I'm talking about. We're talking 1989 Nike cross trainers, I want to say. Okay. Whoa, buddy. New kicks. Uh, and then we get to snap my fingers with Pink Panther S. Cool kind of like stop and start hi-hat. Uh, very kind of tinkling synths. Really nice. Has this great haunting outro with this kind of like slow boots and cats rhythm. And it's kind of extended synths in the melody going all over different channels. Stunting has the return of Channel Trace, who I really like. More choppy drums and fluttering keyboards. Out of Luck is the final track, which has Mariah, the scientist, uh, singing California. Most songs that start with the word California don't work out well, but this one does because it sounds more like Dr. Dre, less like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> can we do that? Can we, can we have a, a California scale? Uh, just great drum production here. So that's my take on the album by Kate Renata. I, I It's funny because... Really, the first time I listened to it, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to approach this. And I think it's because of that hybridity, you know? Because of that hybridity, because I didn't have like an easy way to approach it, I was tempted to not cover it. But I'm glad that I did. These are my Patreons. They give me money so I can buy music, like the Jay Dilla album. And so I can buy books, like the Dan Charnas book. Now, I'm just going to check Instagram real quick, like, to see if, if Dan Charnas responded to me. Because that would be super dope if I could just do that right now. Okay, are we ready? No, it's okay. It hasn't been read so far. So. And, and it's unread. Listen, I get a lot of messages. I get a lot of requests. I get a lot of hidden requests. Um, oh, sweet. Okay, <laughs> I just checked my messages. Someone from the New York Times reached out to me. <laughs> All right, in that case, See me in print. Till next time, uh, there's the camera.